In this video, I'm going to go over the polig hellman algorithm. It is a method for computing discrete logs. This method works when p minus 1, uh, the modulus minus 1, has only small factors. The smaller the factors, the less time it takes. If you have really big factors, it takes a long time, and thus you're defeating the purpose of using the algorithm in the first place. The goal just as a reminder, with computing discrete logs, is to find x, where beta equals alpha to the x, mod um, some p, where x is in between 0 and p minus 1. Okay, so for example, if we say p is 41, alpha is 7, and beta is 12. So we want to solve 12 equals 7 to the x mod 41. The first, first step is to find the prime factors of p minus 1. So 41 minus 1 is 40, which equals 2 to the third power times 5. Um, those are our prime factors of p, which we're going to call our q's. And we will find one x for each q. And I will explain what the x's are for as we go. So for q equals 2, remember our q's came from the prime factors. For q equals 2, we want to say our x is going to equal to three terms added together. We had um, two cubed, so we that's where we get three terms. If it had been two squared, we would only have two terms, etc. Um, each term is an xo, x1, x2, etc. Um, times two, because q is two, um, to the powers that are starting with 0 and increasing from there. So now what we need to do is find each of these to plug in to this overall equation to get our x. So to find the xo, what we do is we take the original um, this right here, beta equals alpha to the x, and we take each side and we put it to the power p minus 1 over q. So if we um, solve that out, stick plug in the numbers and so on, we have 12 to the 40 over 2, remember q is 2 in this case, equals 7 to the 40 over 2 as well, um, times xo. Remember we're trying to solve for xo. And then we can calculate both these numbers. Remember, we're in mod 41 from here. And we get that negative 1 equals negative 1 xo. Now, as a, general, as a general process, we can test values for xo, starting with 0 and moving up one at a time. Um, so we can see that negative 1 does not equal negative 1 to the 0. However, obviously, we can see that negative 1 equals negative 1 to the power 1. Um, but when it's not that obvious, we can just try different numbers. Um, so therefore, xo equals 1 from right there. So next, we have to find x1. To find x1, first um, we have to recalculate our beta. For our xo, we could just use the beta o, or the, just the beta that we were given. Um, but for x1, we have to calculate beta 1, which equals to the old beta, the one before it, times alpha to the negative xo, so 12 times 7 to the negative 1, which equals 31 mod 41.
and then we go through the same process as before. Um, however, this time, what we're doing is we take the beta 1 to the p minus 1 over q1. Now, the q sub 1 is um, to our q to the next power. Before it was 2 to the 1, now it's 2 to the 2. We're just moving up 1. However, the alpha part, the q is still 2. So, um, remember just like before we did beta to this, alpha to this, xo, now we're doing almost the same thing except we have x1 and we have a slightly different q right here. Those are the only two things that changed. And the beta one, excuse me. So we have 31 to the 40 over 4, because we have 2 squared, equals 7 to the 40 over 2, so we didn't change that q, equals x1. So if we, if we, um, do this right here, we get that 31 to the power 10 equals 7 to the power 20 times x1. And I calculated just this side and got that 31 to the 10th power equals 1 mod 41. So therefore we know that xo has to be 0 because um, anything over here to the power 0 will be equal to 1. So that's what will make this statement true. So x1 equals 0. Now remember we had um, three terms, so now we have to find our last um, term x with x2. Um, but remember we have to get a new beta for this one by taking the previous beta times alpha, still the original alpha, to the negative previous x, which is um, the pattern for finding new betas. New beta equals previous beta times alpha to the negative previous x. So we have that it equals 31 times 7 to the negative 0. So 7 to the 0 is 1, which equals 31, mod 41. So it happens to be the same in this case. So, we do the next step, um, so we have our beta 2 here, and remember this, um, this whole power here, the Q changes, so this time the Q2 equals 2 to the 3, remember we just take that power up 1, so this time it equals alpha to the same original power, this whole thing this alpha to this power does not change throughout the whole process. Just this side. And then we have our x2. So we plug in the numbers, get 31 to the 40 over 8, which is 2 cubed, equals 7 over 40 over 2 times x2. Or, excuse me, to, to the x2. Anyway, we solve this, and we get that negative 1 mod 41 equals negative 1 to the x2 mod 41 again. So, once again, x2 is 1. Um, because if we put this, if we put a 1 in here, this statement will be true. So, if we recall, we were trying to find x. Because we have 1x for each Q. Remember, Q was 2, um, it, and we had 3 of them, 2 cubed, so we had to go through and find 3 terms to find our x. So if you recall, it was 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 squared, and then we just plug in the 3 numbers that we just found. Um, so 2 to the power of 0 is 1, x0 is 1, plus 2 times 0, plus 4 times 1, and this equals 5. Therefore, our x equals 
5 mod 2 cubed. Because remember, um, we had from the prime factors of p minus 1, we had 2 cubed, and we also had another one, but that was one of them. Note that it's 2 cubed, not 2. So, x equals 5 mod 8. Very important. Now, we'll go on to the next step. We need to find another x from the other q. Recalling, of course, that remember our q's were 2 and 5. So, we... going to use the q equals 5 now. However, we just have 5 to the first power. There's only one 5, there's only one term. There were three 2's, so there were three 2 terms, but this time just one 5. So x will only have one term starting at 5 to the 0 times x to the 0. Um, so we only have that to solve for. So, xo, if we call beta, to the p minus 1 over qo equals alpha to the p minus 1 over q to the xo. Plug those numbers in, solve it through, and we get that 18 equals 37 to the xo mod 41. We can obviously see that um, it's not 0, it's not 1. If we put this to 0, then we'd be saying 18 equals 1 mod 41. Not true. If we put it 1, 18 would be 37 mod 41. Also not true. So let's start with 2. So does 18 equal 37 squared mod 41? Plug it into a calculator. It does not. However, 37 cubed mod 41 is 18. This is a true statement, this bottom one here. Therefore, we can say that x equals, remember it equals 5 to the 0 times xo, so it equals 1 times 3, 3 being our xo, which is just equal to 3. Okay, so hence we have our other x, x equals 3 mod 5 which came from the Q again. So, we have these two statements. x equals 5 mod 8 and x equals 3 mod 5. We can use the Chinese remainder theorem. There's a different video on that. But we can use the Chinese remainder theorem to find that x equals 13 mod 40. And it's mod 40, recall, not mod 41, since x, um, remember, x is an exponent right here in discrete logs. And um, exponents are always mod p minus 1. So therefore, we have that 12 equals 7. Remember, that was the original problem. We wanted to solve 12 equals 7 to the x mod 41. We have found that 12 equals 7 to the power 13 mod 41. Remember, 13 was our goal here. And we have solved the discrete log problem using the Poleg-Hellman algorithm.